Welcome to Review Central. This is OopCat Reviewer number 2, featuring questions for the OopCat Science Proficiency Subtest. This reviewer is intended for those who are eyeing, or are set to take, the University of the Philippines College Admission Test, or OopCat. There are 10 questions featured on this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual questions that appeared on previous OopCats. Before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Let's begin. Question number one. Torque is the product of the force and the lever arm. In symbols, torque, represented by the Greek letter tau, is equal to force F, times the length of the lever arm, L. Referring to the accompanying diagram, two masses, 8 kg and 10 kg, are hung at both ends of a 90 cm stick. The stick has markings every 10 cm. If the mass of the stick is negligible, where should the stick be suspended by means of a cord to for the stick to remain horizontal? A. At point A. B. At point B. C. At point C. D. At point D. The correct answer is C. At point C. Let. Tau L be the torque on the left part of the stick, and Tau R be the torque on the right part of the stick. To keep the stick horizontal, Tau L must be equal to Tau R. Therefore, the force applied to the left, times the length of the stick to the left, should be equal to the force applied to the right, times the length of the stick to the right. Substituting the given values. 8 kg times length of the stick to the left, is equal to 10 kg times the length of the stick to the right. Let's label this as equation 1. But the length of the stick to the right is equal to 90 cm, which is the total length of the stick, minus the length of the stick to the left. Let's label this as equation 2. Substituting equation 2 to equation 1, we can now solve for the length of the left side of the stick and arrive at 50 cm as the answer. Substituting the computed length of the left side of the stick to equation 2. We should arrive at 40 cm as the computed length of right side of the stick. Therefore, the stick should be suspended at point C of the stick. We have possibly useful notes for you in relation to this problem. Note number 1, it will probably be easier and faster for you to use X and Y or some other variables instead of tau L and tau R. Note number 2, the solution we just presented is the formal and mathematical solution, if you need to show and prove how you arrived at your answer. However, if pressed for time, especially in an exam, a visual inspection of the diagram, and the use of simple ratio and proportion, should be sufficient to arrive at the answer, since it is stated that the mass of the stick is negligible and no other forces, such as friction, wind resistance, etc., have been mentioned. Question number 2. If two flies heterozygous for wing length and body color are crossed, which of the following are possible results? A. Chance of long wings is 3 fourths. B. Chance of short wings is 1 half. C. Chance of gray body is 1 fourth. D. All of the above are true. The correct answer is A. The chance of long wings is 3 fourths. This is a question on genetics. For two heterozygous flies, all the possible combination of alleles are shown in the table. As you can see, there are 3 fourths, or 75% chance of long wings. Question number 3. A neutral atom in the ground state contains 16 electrons. What is the total number of electrons in the 3p sublevel? A. 2 B. 4 C. 6 D. 8 The correct answer is B, there are 4 electrons in the 3p sublevel. In order to write the electron configuration of the given neutral atom, we first need to know the number of electrons for the atom. 
there are 16 electrons as stated. When we write the configuration we'll put all 16 electrons in orbitals around the nucleus of the atom. Here's what you need to memorize. Each s orbital holds up to 2 electrons. Each p orbital holds up to 6 electrons. And? Each d orbital holds up to 10 electrons. By the way, the element with 16 electrons is sulfur. In writing the electron configuration for sulfur, the first two electrons will go in the 1s orbital. Since 1s can only hold two electrons, the next two electrons for sulfur go in the 2s orbital. The next set of electrons will go in the 2p orbital. The p orbital can hold up to six electrons. We'll put six in the 2p orbital and then put the next two electrons in the 3s orbital. Since the 3s orbital is now full, we'll move to the 3p orbital, where we'll place the remaining four electrons. Therefore the sulfur electron configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. Question number 4. Flowers are the reproductive organs of angiosperms. These organs have various parts that fall under three groups, male parts, female parts and accessory parts. Depending on the present structures, a flower may be categorized as complete, incomplete, perfect, or imperfect. Which of the following lists of parts describes a perfect flower but not a complete flower? A. Pistil and stamen only. B. Pistil and accessory parts only. C. Stamen and accessory parts only. D. Pistil, stamen, and accessory parts. The correct answer is A. Pistil and stamen only. Plants may produce flowers that are perfect or imperfect. A flower with male, that is, stamen, and female, that is, pistil, parts is called a perfect flower. A flower that is missing male or female parts is an imperfect flower. On the other hand, plants may have flowers that are complete or incomplete. If a flower has sepals, petals, pistils, and stamens, it is a complete flower. If a flower is missing one of those, it is an incomplete flower. Remember, imperfect flowers are always incomplete, but incomplete flowers may or may not be imperfect. Question number 5. The graph shows the change in energy that occurs during a chemical reaction. Which of the following is most likely to happen as the reaction nears completion? A. The energy level of the reactants remains constant. B. The reaction takes in energy from its surroundings. C. The reaction releases energy to its surroundings. D. The energy level of the reactants increases gradually. The correct answer is C. As shown in the graph, the energy sharply drops over time. This means that energy is released to its surroundings. Question number 6. Protozoa are placed in different classes according to their A. Movement B. Color C. Shape D. Size The correct answer is A. Movement. All protozoal species are assigned to the kingdom Protista in the Whitaker classification. The protozoa are then placed into various groups primarily on the basis of how they move. The groups are called phyla, singular, phylum, by some microbiologists, and classes by others. Question number 7. Referring to the diagram to the right, which of the following is true? 1. Path A is uplift, weathering, erosion, deposition. 2. Path B is heating and crystallization. 3. Heat and pressure are responsible for path C. Here are your answer choices. A. 1 and 2 only. B. 1 and 3 only. C. 2 and 3 only. D, 1, 2, and 3. The correct answer is B, 1 and 3 only. Uplift, weathering, 
erosion, and deposition all lead to sedimentation. Therefore, one is true. Crystallization, or the deposition or accumulation of sediments, followed by cementation, lead to the formation of sedimentary rocks. Heating is not part of this process. Therefore too is not true. Extreme high heat and high pressure can transform sedimentary rocks into metamorphic rocks, so three is true. Question number eight. A forensic anthropologist would most likely use which bone to determine the height of a corpse? A. Phalanges B. Femur C. Occipital D. Patella The correct answer is B. Femur. Stature or height estimation is obtained from measurements of long bones, namely the humerus, femur, and tibia. If these bones are unavailable, the ulna, radius, and fibula can also provide a good range for the expected height of an individual. Question number 9. The height of the column of mercury in a mercury barometer is dependent on the following, except on the a. Diameter of the tube b. Atmospheric pressure c. Density of mercury and weather condition d. Altitude at which the measurement is made The correct answer is a. The diameter of the tube has a negligible effect. Looking at this mathematically, Pressure is equal to the density of fluid, times acceleration due to gravity, times change in height of the fluid. Therefore, the diameter of the tube does not play into the equation. Question number 10. Which element is the most electronegative? A. Mercury B. Francium C. Sodium D. Fluorine the correct answer is D, fluorine. Electronegativity increases from bottom to top in groups, and increases from left to right across periods, in the periodic table of elements. Thus, from among the choices, fluorine is the most electronegative. In fact, fluorine is one of the most electronegative of all the elements. In the Pauling electronegativity scale, fluorine is the most electronegative element, not helium or neon, since helium, neon, and argon are not listed in that scale. However, in the Ulrich Rokoff scale, helium has the highest electronegativity. Meanwhile, francium is the least electronegative of all the elements, regardless of the scale used. You have just completed UPCAT Reviewer number 2 which featured questions for the UPCAT Science Proficiency Subtest. If you wish to watch more UPCAT reviewers for the UPCAT Science Proficiency Subtest, check out our UPCAT Science Proficiency Reviewers Playlist. Check out also our other UPCAT playlists for other reviewer topics. If you haven't done so yet, please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central, and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Please like if you find this video useful, and feel free to share to anyone who may also benefit from it. We wish you all the best on your forthcoming UPCAT, and we look forward to your exciting days as an ESCO or ISCA. Padayong.